Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, last week I had the misfortune of being involved in a debate with a flat earther about the function of a gyro compass. As he began to describe the function of the gyro compass as running an electric charge through a ring of mercury, my mind began to wander. At about three minutes into the debate, I began to wonder if there were better ways for me to hasten my inevitable death, and I considered chain smoking. Now, for eight months, I have tried to figure out what is the deal with the flat earth. How, in 2019, with the availability of the internet and all of the science and data that we can access with our fingertips, could people possibly believe that the earth was flat? Then I thought back to my childhood, and the answer came to me. It's elegantly simple. You see, Flat Earth is the pet rock of YouTube and the internet. In a moment, I'll tell you why. Now, as the story goes, a bunch of guys were getting together complaining about things, because that's what we guys do. And they started talking about the problems they had with their pets. And there was a running joke around the office that, you know, we really need to have some pet that doesn't have any maintenance to it. The ideal pet would be a rock. You know, it just sits there. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't have to be fed, bathed, and it doesn't die. So this running joke was heard by a gentleman by the name of Gary Dahl, who was an advertising executive. And he kind of got to thinking about it over a while. And this was the result, the pet rock. It came in its own carrying case with breathing holes. It had a nest, you had the pet rock, you had a collar, a leash, and most importantly, you had an instruction book. Now, this sounds like a joke, and it was, but it was a cute joke because the instruction book was really what you were buying because it was hilarious, and we're going to go over that in a couple of minutes. And you know the best part about it? It made old Gary a millionaire because he was the one that thought of the idea and he was the one that developed the marketing strategy for it. But what does this all have to do with the flat earth? Well, funny you should ask, let's have a look. Folks, let me introduce you to Math Powerland. He's one of the earliest proponents of the flat earth and has been targeted by Eric Dubay as somebody that quote unquote stole his idea. My friend and fellow creator Rory has done an 18 minute video of Math Powerland claiming that he started Flat Earth as a joke as part of his comedy routine. Now, I've spoken to a woman who claims to have written this material for this routine, but I'm going to let Mr. Powerland say a little bit for himself. Via these fakes, who are all infringing and violating my copyright, that's Rob Skiba. You use my talking points, Rob Skiba. I will get at your address. I will serve you. That's Mark Sargent. You use my talking points twist it so you can get around it, but you still use flat earth. You still say that all the images of earth are paintings. This is all my routine. This is all photo or painting. You've repackaged. Okay, so back to business here. The pet rock movement was started pretty much as an inside joke, and then a marketer got a hold of it. According to Mr. Math Powerland, flat earth was started as part of his comedy routine, and then marketers got a hold of it. Now, in order to really make this an interesting thing, you've got to have a good backstory. And with the pet rock, it came with this little booklet that was shipped with every pet rock. Let's go through it. Now, the first thing that you need to do with a good story is you need to make your audience feel special. Now, with the pet rock, you are now the owner of a genuine pedigree pet rock, not just any old wild rock on the side of the road. This is a special rock. This is found by specially trained dogs on a remote beach in Mexico, kind of like truffle pigs, and probably as valuable as truffles. At least that's the implication. And you know, not everyone is the right kind of person to be able to own a pet rock such as this one. You're special. Now, despite being sold as very low maintenance pets, apparently there's a lot to know in order to be the proper owner of a pet rock. For example, you have to leave it in the box for three days to let it get used to the environment and, wait for it, wake up. Then you need to give it its own special place that it can call home. 
someplace that it feels safe, kind of like YouTube in the Flat Earth Movement. Now, the beauty of a pet rock is that it's perfect for people that don't like animals or that don't want to have to care for an animal or learn much about them. Kind of like the Flat Earth looks at physics. Now, like the Flat Earth and Robotham, your pet rock comes from a long and illustrious line. The pyramids of Egypt, the Great Wall of China, the streets of ancient Rome, all had your rock's ancestors in them. Yes, that's right. In addition to being descendant of rock royalty. Oh, hang on a second. There, that's better. They've played an important role in history. Like the Flat Earth, rocks even played an important role in the Bible. Now, one of the first things that you should do as the owner of a new pet rock is try and teach it a few commands. The one that they recommend you try first is come, and it has very specific instructions on how to train your pet rock to come. It says that you should use the pet's name and speak with authority and command it to come using hand signals. So, like this. Come, Brutus, come. And it says that the pet rock probably won't do anything at first, but it offers advice for that. Here, let's see. So, repeat the command. Come, Brutus, come on, fella, here, boy. Now, start walking slowly towards your rock. Incredibly, as you walk towards your rock, it'll appear to be coming towards you. Make sure to give it a good pat of approval, though. This is very similar to what we see in the flat earth, except they call it perspective. Well, the next trick's a little easier to teach a rock, and that is the command to stay. It says here, all you really need to do is put the rock on the ground and tell it to stay. It generally picks it up on the first try. Now, it recommends that you go back and check it once in a while, but like the horizon being flat and rising to eye level, there's no need to check it. Now, another important thing to do with your pet rock is teach it the difference between stay and sit. Now, if you tell the rock to sit and you sneak out of the room and then come back and you find that it's actually laying down and staying, you need to scold the rock, kind of like this. Bad horizon. Bad. Get back up to eye level. Now you would think that the next command would be stand, but you're presupposing the rock has feet. It doesn't. Now the next trick is probably one of my favorites, and that's roll over. Roll over is kind of an interesting trick to teach your pet rock, because in the wild, it's a natural phenomenon for rocks to roll over, especially during landslides. But when you have a domesticated pet rock, you need to help it out a little bit. So the first thing you do is you go up to the top of a mountain and then you command the rock to roll down the mountain and let it go. And it'll keep doing that until it's tired, generally at the bottom of the mountain. Now, this is really cool because, you know, obviously you're not changing the mountain yourself. You can't wiggle it. And gravity, well, what's gravity? What you are changing is your independent variable, and that is you telling the rock to roll down the hill. You wiggle the independent variable, you tell it to go roll down the hill, and it rolls down the hill. You have your cause and your effect. Now, the independent variable, of course, is the presumed cause of the rock rolling down the hill. Sound familiar? Now, the final trick that I want to teach my pet rock is play dead. Now, fortunately, this is pretty easy for them to do, and, and they seem to enjoy it. It's just kind of like their go-to trick. Even when you're not around, they'll just play dead all on their own. They seem to enjoy it. It's kind of like mountains disappearing into the inferior mirage. That's just what it does, right? You know, here's where the flat earth and a pet rock owner are very, very similar. Uh, many of us say that we can see curve on the horizon, but you can see the truth. You know that it's flat and you can see it. Just like these rocks right here. 
I don't own a pet rock, so they both look fine to me. But if you were a pet rock owner, you would know that rock on the right is really sick. Now, finally, a word of caution. You should only get domesticated pet rocks. A wild rock will always be wild. You can only get your pet rocks from authorized distributors, much like Flat Earth gets their information from authorized websites. So never go outside your authorized websites and never get a pet rock from the wild. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. I remember Christmas in 1975, everybody wanted a pet rock and our parents all wanted mood rings. But there was one difference between the pet rock movement back then and the flat earth movement now. Pet rocks are a real thing and we knew they were a joke. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by and if you have a moment, hit that little like and subscribe button down there in the lower right. I'd really appreciate having you follow us along and see my videos coming out in the future. That's what I make them for. So take care, guys.